Alright, 4.3, we're going to be writing equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So it's important to know here that when two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. So parallel lines mean that they never intersect. It would be two lines that look like this, that just keep continuing on in the same direction, but they will never cross. They have to have the same slope. Here it makes a note that all vertical lines are parallel. So they talk about vertical lines being the exception. The slope of a vertical line is undefined, so technically they have the same slope also. In example A, we have to determine which of the lines are parallel. So the first thing we want to do is find the slopes, and then we are going to compare the slopes of the three, to see if they're the same or not. So. We have three different lines here. I have to do the slope formula three different times. So my slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to label my points as x1, y1, x2, y2. Plug in what I have. So this would be 2 minus 3 over 1 minus negative 4. 2 minus 3 would be negative 1. 1 minus negative 4. This turns into plus. So 1 plus 4 would be 5. So my slope here is negative 1 over 5. Now we're going to do the same thing for the second line. I have my x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to plug in everything I have. So negative 1 minus 0 over 1 minus negative 3. Negative 1 minus 0 would just be negative 1. 1 minus negative 3, this turns into a plus 3. So 1 plus 3 would be 4. So, so far, we have negative 1 over 5 and negative 1 over 4. So these are not the same. So these two are not parallel. So they're not the same slope. They're not parallel. So lastly, let's find the slope for C. So I have m is equal to, I'm going to plug in, but first, before I plug in, I want to label them just to make sure everything's going in the right spot. So I have x1, y1, x2, y2. So this would be negative 5 minus negative 4 over 2 minus negative 3. Whenever we have minus a negative, it turns into a plus. So negative 5 plus 4 would be negative 1. 2 minus negative 3, this turns into a plus. So this would be 2 plus 3, which is 5. So negative 1 over 5. So negative 1 over 5 would be the same slope as my first equation. So here, A and C have the same slope, so they are parallel. But line B is not, because it has a different slope. For the next part, B, we're doing the same thing. We have to find a line that passes through two points and then another line. So we have two different lines here, and we have to figure out if they are parallel. So I'm going to first draw my line A with these two points. So remember, we have X and then Y. So we have to move along the X axis first. So I would go to the left to negative 5 and up 3. And then for my second point, I go to the left to negative 6 and down 1. This right here is negative 6. 
So this is my line A. Now I'm gonna draw line B. So it passes through three, negative two. So I go to the right, this is X, so I have to move along the X axis first. So to the right three, down two. And then do the second point. So I go to the right two and down to negative seven. Should be a little bit off of our graph down here. This is negative six, be right here. And connect the dots. So that would be my second line. So we can find the slope by using our slope formula like we did in the last one, or I can just count my rise over run between the two points. So for my line A, I go up one, two, three, four. So my rise would be four and my run would be one. So it'd be four over one for my slope. This was rise over run. Four over one simplifies to just four. So my slope for the first line is four. Now let's find our slope for line B. So I go up one, two, three, four, five, and to the right one. So for my slope for line B, it would be five over one, which is just five. These are not the same, so these are not parallel. They have to be exactly the same in order to be parallel. On the next page, for example two, we have to write an equation of a line that passes through the point five and negative four and is parallel to the line that is given. So it gave us a line. So we wanna find the slope of that line. So I'm gonna use this line to find the slope. Well, this line is already in y equals mx plus b form, slope intercept form. So my slope would be two. And if my slope is parallel to this line, that means it's gonna have the same slope. So my slope of the new line that passes through this point is also going to have the slope of two. So all we use the equation for, the second equation here that was given, is the slope. We ignore everything else. We're just using the slope. Now we're going to use the point and our slope and put it in point slope form because it gave us a point and the slope. So we plug it into point slope form. So my point slope form was y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So my point would be my x1 and y1. My slope is my m and I just plug everything in. So it'll be y minus negative four is equal to two times x minus five. Now you can simplify this a little bit because minus a negative turns into a plus. So it'd be y plus four is equal to two times x minus five. And this is our equation of a line. For part b, we're gonna write an equation of a line that passes through negative four two and is parallel to the line given here. So we're gonna use this line to find the slope. Our slope would be what's being multiplied to x. So our slope here is one fourth. Because this is in y equals mx plus b form. So the m is one fourth. Now we're gonna use our slope and the point that was given and plug it into point slope forms. So this is my x1 and y1, and plug it in. So just to rewrite our point slope form up top, I have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So y minus two is equal to one fourth times x minus negative four. Minus a negative turns into a plus. So this would be y minus two is equal to one fourth times x 
plus 4. And this is our equation of a line. Now these two questions don't specify what type of equation of a line it wants. It just says an equation of a line. On a test or quiz, it would be specific on what type of equation, either point-slope form or slope-intercept form. If it's not specific, you can do whatever form you want, but it would usually be specific on one or the other. But remember, we could always change this to be in slope-intercept form by distributing and combining like terms. All right, next we're going to look at perpendicular lines. So two lines in the same plane that intersect to form right angles are perpendicular. And vertical lines are perpendicular to horizontal lines because they would also form right angles. If I had a vertical line and a horizontal line, they would be perpendicular. So two lines are perpendicular. We can tell by their slopes if they are opposite reciprocals of each other. So opposite means that we change the sign. Reciprocal means that we flip it. So if something was positive, we would make it negative. If something's negative, we make it positive. And then reciprocal, we just take the fraction, put whatever's in your numerator in the denominator, whatever's in the denominator goes into the numerator. So we flip and change the sign. So one over four would become negative four over one, or just negative four, because we don't need that one in the denominator of our fraction. Next, negative three over two would become positive two over three. Negative three doesn't look like a fraction, but we would say that it's negative three over one, and when we flip it, it would become positive one over three. And then lastly, for, or not last, but the next one, one, it would just be one over one. When we flip it and make it negative, it would be negative one over one, which is just negative one. And then the last one, we have negative four, so this would be like negative four over one. When we flip it, we make it positive one over four. So you always flip the sign and flip the fraction. And if it's a whole number that it gives it, to you at first, just make it the number over one and then flip it. All right, for example three, we have to determine which of the lines are parallel or perpendicular. So we wanna find the slope and compare the slopes. So for A, for line A, my slope, this is in y equals mx plus b form. So my slope would be four. Just the B, or the M, sorry, the M, the number that's in front of the X. And the second one, it's not in slope-intercept form. We can make it into slope-intercept form. So I could move the X over, subtract X on both sides. So this would be 4Y is equal to negative X plus 3. Then we can divide everything by 4. So y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. So our slope here is negative 1 fourth. And then for c, again, it's not in slope-intercept form, but we can put it in slope-intercept form so we can clearly see what our slope is. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. This would be negative 8y is equal to 2x plus 16. Divide everything by negative 8. So y is equal to, I can simplify 2 over negative 8 and make it negative 1 fourth. Because I just divided the, both the top and the bottom by 2. That's how I got the 1 fourth. And then 16 divided by negative 8 would be negative 2. So here my slope is negative 1 fourth. So looking at the three slopes that I have, I know that line B and line C have the same slope, so they would be parallel. C 
So line B is parallel to line C. But also, we notice that line A is the opposite reciprocal of it. If I found the opposite reciprocal of 1 4, I'd make it positive and I'd flip it, so it'd become 4 over 1, which is 4. So that means line A is perpendicular to line B and C. So line A would be perpendicular. So line A is per perpendicular to both B and C. All right, let's do the same thing in example B. So it gives me three lines. I just have to find the slope of each one, and then we compare them. So line A is not in slope-intercept form. So we can't clearly see what our slope is, but I can make it into slope-intercept form. I'm going to make it into y equals mx plus b. So I just have to get that y all by itself, move everything else to the other side. So we move it by doing the opposite. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. So now I have 6y is equal to negative 2x minus 3. And then since 6 is being multiplied to y, I do the opposite and divide everything by 6. So y is equal to, I can simplify my fraction here, divide it both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So that would be negative 1 third x minus, I can simplify the second fraction here too, divide them both by 3. So minus 1 half. So my slope here would be negative 1 third. The y-intercept doesn't matter. doesn't matter what the second number is. We're just looking at the slope. So let's do the same thing for B. It's already in slope-intercept form. Perfect. So I'm going to just circle my slope. My slope here would be 3. For the third one, I have to get it into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract 18 on both sides because we want that Y to be all by itself. So negative 6y is equal to 9 minus 18 would be negative 9. And then divide everything by negative 6. So y is equal to, I can simplify this fraction, divide the top and the bottom by negative 3. So I'd make this 3 over 2. But here, we don't have an x. So if I were to graph this line, it goes through 3 halves on y. So it would be a horizontal line. And my slope of a horizontal line is 0. So the slope here is 0. So looking at my three slopes, I see that a and B are opposite reciprocals. They're flipped. One's positive and one's negative. So line A and B are perpendicular. So they're perpendicular if they're opposite reciprocals, and if they have the same slope, that would mean that they're parallel. But here, nothing has the same slope, so we don't have any parallel lines. Just A and B are perpendicular. Line C is not perpendicular or parallel to either one. So. For example, 4, we have to write an equation of a line that passes through negative 3, 1, and is perpendicular to the line that's given. So first thing we're going to do is find the slope of this line. So my slope here is 1 half. 
because this is written in y equals mx plus b form. So my n would be that one half. So if the line is perpendicular to this one, my slope is going to be the opposite reciprocal of it. So I'm just going to say m with the little perpendicular symbol there. So it's just saying the perpendicular slope. I have to flip it and change the sign. So instead of positive, it's now negative. And instead of 1 over 2, it would be 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So the slope that I care about now is negative 2. We are not using this one anymore. We only use that to find our new slope because our line is perpendicular to this one. So it's the opposite reciprocal. So now I'm going to use point slope form. Use my point and my slope. So I have x1 and y1. My point slope form is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. I have to plug everything in. So y minus 1 is equal to negative 2 times x minus negative 3, which would turn that into a plus 3. So x plus so this would be my equation of one. All right, looking at the next example, B, we want to write an equation of a line that passes through negative 3, 5 and is perpendicular to the line. So the first thing we want to do is find the slope. Second thing is plug it into point slope form. So to find the slope, we use the equation that's given. So my slope here would just be negative 3. Now this is my slope of the equation, but I'm trying to find something that's perpendicular to it. So to find my perpendicular slope, I want to take the opposite reciprocal. So this would be negative 3 over 1. So I would have to flip it and change the sign. So it would become positive 1 over 3. So the slope that I'm looking at is positive one-third. Now I'm going to plug it into point slope form. So I have my x1 and y1. My point slope form is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So I plug in my slope, my x1 and my y1. So this would be y minus 5 is equal to one-third times x minus negative 3. Whenever we have minus a negative, it turns into a plus. So it would be x plus 3. And that would be our equation. We're going to skip example 5, so the last two examples. So this was all we're going to be doing for the notes today. So don't forget to submit the notes to Canvas by the end of class. And if you still have time, you can start working on the homework.